Hey, uh, welcome back everybody. It's been a little while since the last video. Um, sorry about that and sorry about the fact that we'll be a little bit um, inconsistent for the next couple of weeks. I'm still doing a little bit of traveling, uh, delivering my kids to their respective colleges. Um, so uh, this will go up and then hopefully there'll be one next week, but then hopefully we'll settle into once a week after that. Uh, for this session, this time I thought uh, take a couple of minutes just a short video, nothing new, nothing specific, but I just want to talk a little bit about how I hope um, you're getting things out of this series and uh, also a couple of reflections um, that I've thought about making this series. Um, so first is whenever you watch a video, it's kind of hard to um, to keep, you know, to, to do things in real time. So even if we have these keys on the bottom, so if we're here and I've got, you know, whatever my keystrokes are being shown down here, and I can uh, talk about what I'm doing. Um, if you're watching it, it's kind of hard to do at the same time, and that, that's a little bit annoying. And um, also, sometimes when we do things, especially this is something I've learned as a teacher, is we have to be really conscious of um, things we just do automatically, things that we take for granted. Um, and this is something that I might do on a video or when, when teaching a class where I'll just um, I'll just type something or do something and it's automatic for me not realizing when I first had to learn it I had to go through a lot of steps um, and uh, you know it, it doesn't mean I'm always going to pick up on it and give you the important piece of information but I'll do my best with that but the other thing is um, I've noticed that when I've watched uh, videos the big thing isn't so much how to do something but just to know that something can be done and if I realize that something can be done, then later on I can look and figure out how to do it. Um, so uh, I'll give you a little example of this that happened to me, and I'll cover this in detail when we get back to org mode. Is um, I was watching a video. I was watching one of um, uh, Sasha Chua's Emacs chat videos. I forget which one. It might have been this one, um, or I may have been looking at her website. And uh, for those of you that don't know, um, uh, Sasha, she was a, a major, major person in the Emacs community. Um, posts an Emacs news thing. That does a lot of really good stuff with the community. Um, I've learned a lot by looking, uh, looking at her website, watching the videos she'd made, um, you know, stealing from her configuration. She's really a terrific member of the community. Um, never met her, don't know her, um, but great respect for, for everything she does. Um, but uh, she makes these, uh, she's been making these Emacs chats where she spends an hour uh, on a video chat with somebody within the Emacs community and things that they talk about what they do and how they do it and their workflows, etc. Um, and one of the things I noticed is she's got these timestamps. So for this a video for Magnar Svin, um, and he does some really awesome stuff. You should definitely check out Emacs Rocks. Um, you know, notice here it's uh, okay at four minutes and ten seconds. Friends influences down here eleven minutes, and I'm like, well, how is she keeping track of this? Um, and ultimately. This led me to look into uh, timers in org mode, and they're really pretty simple. The whole idea is, so let me just put this file into org mode, and if I'm in org mode, I can type control C, X, control X, zero to start a timer, and now the timer is started, and every time I type control C, control X, dot, I get another timestamp. So I'll wait a few seconds, control C, control X, dot, and this is a quick and easy way of, uh, of keeping track of time flow while you're taking notes. And if you want to uh, pause the timer, control C, control X, comma, and uh, that paused it. Uh, you see on the bottom it says pause, control C, control X, comma, starts it again. Wait a few seconds, control C, control X, dot. Um, and we can stop this, control U, control C, control X, comma, and that stops the timer. And I didn't know these offhand, I just started poking around and found out that um, I figured it was an org mode thing. Um, maybe it was even, um, I think maybe at some point in one of her videos, Sasha had her notes up and I saw her doing something in an org mode file for this. Um, but I got those keystrokes just by looking at the org menu and it says here, um, dates and scheduling and here we got them right over here start time this is why I like the menu so you can find things out um, and then later on use the keystrokes and um, I've used this feature for a few things most notably when I'm um, 
when I'm observing a lesson, um, when I'm observing another teacher, uh, I have to give them feedback on their lesson. So it's really nice to have a timestamp and I can say, oh, in 20 minutes you did this, or in 25 minutes the class did this. And this is a really easy way for me to uh, take notes on the lesson and keep track of when things happen. Um, and I just would rebind this to a key like F1 or something so I could quickly just hit F1 whenever I wanted to update the timestamp. Um, so even though watching Sasha's uh, video didn't tell me how to do this, it told me that this can be done. And once I knew that this can be done, um, I was able to go and look for it and find that. And I, ho I hope that you're seeing these things and I encourage you to, um, if you see me do something and I don't cover it, look for how it's done or, or just uh, put a comment up on the blog or on the YouTube, preferably the blog, so it's easy for people uh, to see the comment and if someone can put up an answer, myself or someone else, we can share that information. All right, so that's mostly what I wanted to talk about today. Um, we're gonna get back to um, actual Emacs content in the next video. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of videos on C and C++ support, mostly because I'll be doing some C++ instruction later this, uh, this year. Uh, then we'll get back to some org mode stuff and how I use org mode to create lessons and to use it for my day to day. And then we're going to jump into some small little packages that just kind of make everything easier. So what I'm going to do, let me see how long this video is going. Um, Okay, so we're still on the short side. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of little things that I've noticed about making this video series, because this is new to me. Um, I, I've been teaching for a quarter century, but this is my first attempt at making videos. And the one big thing that I've noticed is um, it's really weird uh, talking into a microphone and to my own screen. Um, I'm used to being in front of a class and usually it's about 30 people. Uh, sometimes it's a small group. Every now and then there'll be a big lecture, uh, you know, if you're giving a presentation. Um, but in all those cases, you've got a feedback loop. Um, you know, you can tell a joke and the audience or the class responds. Well, except once I was um, introducing some of my students at the New York Tech meetup and I was told I had to tell a bad joke and I told the penguin joke. And I'm, um, uh, so we had an audience of about 1,200 people and not one laugh. Uh, so that was, yeah, that was kind of bad. But um, but you're able to get that feedback loop. You're able to look at the faces of your class, your audience. You can uh, you can vibe off of them. You can go in different directions. You can really develop a rapport. Um, but you can't do this in a one-way medium. So that that's really enlightening to me, and I'm you know I'm uh, getting used to it. But but it is kind of weird. So uh, for those of you that um, you know that have been chiming in on Twitter and on. Um, on the blog or on the video itself or on Reddit. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, it. It's very motivational to keep me making these. Um, you know, it also kind of, you know, let, lets it feel like, you know, getting getting to, getting a feel of some of the people who are watching this. Um, and, you know, even though it takes a lot longer than having a real class, um, you know, starting to get a little idea of who this community is. Um, and that'll let me direct these videos, um, you know, not just for me and my students um, in my classes at Hunter, but also for the uh, greater Emacs community. All right, so that's it for uh, for this time. Um, hopefully we'll have another video next week, but if not, we should get on to the weekly schedule after that. Um, I encourage you to leave comments on the blog, leave comments on the video, preferably the blog. Um, again, that makes it central for people to see things later on, and I'm hoping you're enjoying this and getting stuff out of it. Okay, so I'll see you next time.